it's pretty well known fact that uh, majority of modern day crops um, require some pollination to, to produce the seed. Whilst a lot of the crops like canola and beans and, and lentils can uh, produce adequate uh, yields without um, pollination or, or aided pollination from insects, uh, we know that cross-pollination, where we use insects to take pollen from one plant to another, um, will increase yield and seed set. It happens a lot in horticulture, uh, particularly in, in crops like almonds and apples and, and cherries. Uh, so we've taken that information we know from these other horticultural crops and started applying them into the broadacre crops. So we've been mainly working in, in beans, uh, but it's very well documented um, in scientific circles that canola will also benefit uh, significantly, around 30% uh, from the addition of honeybees into um, crops at adequate densities. Uh, and uh, the CSIRO project that we've been working with is um, has found that up to 30% yield gain from using honeybees in, in beans. The work we've done so far has uh, not showed any significant yield increases in other crops like lentils, chickpeas and peas, although in some years we have seen a benefit but we think that uh, there's other limiting factors involved. In lupins uh, there is a documented yield increase in WA um, of up to about 15%. In our original um, research work we did, we were using uh, beehive densities of around two and a half hives per hectare, and we were finding that that was providing us with optimum pollination. In the years we did the trials, we came across some uh, significantly dry springs, uh, which uh, made moisture the limiting factor in, in crop yield, not pollination. So we found that uh, whilst we were still increasing the yield, we were able to back the, the hive density off to a more manageable level, uh, where we've come to our commercial arrangements now, where we're pollinating at one hive per hectare uh, and charging uh, around half the price we were originally at um, $35 a hive now. Our current um, commercial arrangements are that we place one hive per hectare uh, and we're charging $35 per hive. Uh, but we're also finding that placement's very critical. Uh, where we have paddocks adjacent to canola, for instance, um, we need to place hives at the other, other end of the paddock uh, because canola is more preferable for the bees. Uh, and we're also finding that spreading the hives throughout the crop is much more beneficial and critical to achieving the more even yield increases across the paddock compared to placing them all in a single drop. We're seeing even in, in drier springs or drier years where traditionally beans would really struggle uh, for yield, we're, we're still seeing that we're able to maintain those yield increases uh, and, in, and maintain the average yield across the paddock. From a whole of industry perspective, the impact of the pollination research that's been conducted on the York Peninsula and lower and, lower and mid north regions over the last few years in beans and other crops has meant that farmers are now more aware of the importance of looking after some of those pollinating insects and as a result of that are practicing integrated pest management practices more regularly. So the benefits of a research program like this have been that farmers are now more aware of the importance of pollinating insects in their crop production systems. Those that haven't weaned themselves off are still in a dependency phase and still require quite regular applications of pesticides. Beneficials build up very quickly in the crop and the reliance and need for pesticides becomes reduced quite rapidly. In my mind as, a, as an advisor working with many farm businesses across the region that integrated pest management really does work. Growers that stop using pesticides or reduce the pesticide use in the environment don't need to apply the pesticides because the beneficials do the job for us.